a vibrant, revitalized city and a young, emerging football power came together in 1983 to pursue a daring championship vision. Together, they reached the pinnacle of success in college football. Miami has beaten Nebraska 31 to 30. What a great night in the Orange Bowl. Howard Schellenberger being given a ride across the field. And when the Miami folks say we're number one, I think this time you gotta believe it. In September, the Miami Hurricanes didn't have a chance of winning the national championship. With only four starters returning on offense, a freshman starting at quarterback, and an untested defense, Howard Schnellenberger faced a rebuilding year. There was talent on this team, but the Canes were at best a year away. With their future clouded with question marks, the youthful Hurricane stepped from the practice field to the heat of an intense rivalry with the Florida Gators. Their inexperience was painfully apparent as the veteran Gators took advantage of eight Miami turnovers to score 28 points. A bright spot was the performance of freshman quarterback Bernie Kosar who erased at least some of the preseason question marks with a record 25 completions for 223 yards. Although Miami fans found little else to cheer about this long evening, the coaching staff did see some promising signs. When we came out with a 28 to three loss, it looked like we were not gonna be uh, the type of football team that we hoped we would be. But when we studied the film and saw that almost to a man, our football team had graded out as winners and that Bernie Kosar had completed 25 passes to tie Jim Kelly's record. We looked at that game as if, from a technical standpoint, we had won it. And we tried to build on all those good things that happened in that uh, Florida game that we could use as a springboard for down the season. The frustration of the Florida game quickly turned to confidence as the Hurricanes eliminated the mistakes and scored 62 points in impressive victories over Houston and Purdue. That success would have little meaning, however, if the Canes couldn't perform well against the nationally ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, a team they had beaten only twice since 1955. Going in the game with intensity, knowing that it would be on national TV. It was really a time that we all said to ourselves, this is a time where we can really show the people what kind of ball club we have and, you know, really test us. It was a great club they, they had, so it was a great challenge for us. The city of Miami was getting caught up in the excitement and threw a colorful coming out party to celebrate this classic college football matchup. It got off to a great start when Jay Brophy intercepted. Taking full advantage of the turnover, fullback Speedy Neal scored, and Miami had its show on the road. Notre Dame tried to counter, but failed. Their problems continued as they confronted the growing confidence of Kosar. This young thoroughbred displayed the leadership and poise of a veteran in shredding the Irish pass defense. Ed Brown's dramatic catch gave the Canes a 14 to nothing lead that shocked the national television audience. But the Hurricane defense proved that it was for real. Freshman defensive back Reggie Sutton made an indelible impression on Miami fans, blocking two field goals and making 13 tackles against one of college football's traditional powers. 
as the city began its celebration of this incredible 20 to nothing victory, a very special dream was born. From a team standpoint and for myself personally, the confidence started really growing after the Notre Dame victory. That, there was a few doubts going into that game about where we really stand nationally and because we were a young team, what type of ball club we had. And I think after that game and the way we displayed ourselves on national TV gave us, our team, a lot of confidence for the rest of the season. After four more victories, what once was a rebuilding year, now had the potential of being the greatest season in Miami history. But standing in the way were the West Virginia Mountaineers with an all-star quarterback and a powerful defense. This was a showdown of two emerging national powers, both now ranked in the top 10 and both with their sights on an Orange Bowl bed. But only one could survive with its dream still intact. The hurricane defense was intent on making sure it would be Miami. Stellar performances by linebacker Jay Brophy and middle guard Tony Fitzpatrick set the tempo for the afternoon. With the running game shut down, the inside strength of the Hurricanes turned quarterback Jeff Hostetler's trip to Miami into an exercise in futility. Kosar's most consistent receiver, senior tight end Glenn Dennison, frustrated the Mountaineer defense. His seven catches this day broke the school record for pass receptions in a season. His 19-yard touchdown grab put Miami in front to stay. Two Jeff Davis field goals extended the lead. Just as Dennison had become Miami's consistent receiver, Ed Brown had become its explosive receiver. His 49-yard reception in the fourth quarter set up the final touchdown. Behind outstanding protection from the young offensive line, Kosar hit senior Keith Griffin to seal the Mountaineers' doom. More than 63,000 Miami fans exulted in the heroic 20-3 triumph. The Miami Hurricanes had blown away another nationally ranked opponent. It was hard to imagine how far they had come since that painful afternoon in Gainesville less than two months before. They were now eight and one, the best start in their history. They were on a collision course with destiny. I can't say very much except this. Yes, you come a long way. Nobody in the world thought you could come this far. Nobody had a wildest dream thought you could do it, except everybody here. Howard Nellenberger and the Hurricanes face perhaps the biggest challenge of the year in preparing to face the unknown, unranked, and underrated East Carolina Pirates. All right, let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's get it loose. Let's get ready to go out. Let's get ready to go. Reggie, I want you to take this thing. I want to take it right up the chute. I want to knock it loose. I want to go all the way with it. Total preparation is a Schnellenberger trademark, and it's a major reason why the Hurricanes have been one of the nation's winningest football teams the past five years. Today, being prepared for the unexpected could spell the difference between victory and the end of a dream. This game was supposed to be a breather before the season finale against arch-rival Florida State. But East Carolina turned out to be the quickest and most aggressive opponent the Canes had faced. For the first time since the Florida game, they trailed at halftime. Oh, get your hands up. Let's go to work. East Carolina's team speed was disrupting the Miami game plan. 
So between the sideline and the press box, the coaching staff communicated critical changes in strategy. You think they go blue man? You think they might go blue man here? Will they go blue man, Gary? The long yardage they went blue man three times in zone once, 30 zone once. All right, go ahead. They concluded that the Pirates could be outflanked by a carefully executed screen pass. All-purpose back Albert Bentley proved them correct. Once, then twice. The team's leading Russia was bringing the Hurricanes back. On second down, Kozar facing seven men up front. Fake, back, throwing, open, touchdown Miami! Albert Bentley both open for the score. All alone, absolutely all alone. A great call, just a fabulous call by the offensive coaches of the Hurricanes. A blocked extra point left Miami trailing seven to six. With just over four minutes left, the stubborn Pirates threatened to put the game out of reach, but the Canes defense held and a field goal attempt sailed wide right. The Hurricanes would have one more opportunity, but began 80 yards away, fighting the Pirates and the clock. 50 short dog Z takeoff, can you get that in there? No preparation and hard work alone would not be enough. It would take character and courage to win this football game. At the 35-yard line, Bentley is up and Griffin is deep. Kozar on the drop. Bernie looking, firing long. Bomb, Brown, there, got it! And out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Make it the 13-yard line. Miami's home run receiver, Ed Brown, had put the victory within reach. So while Steve Schnellenberger celebrated on the sideline, Kosar and the offensive line set their sights on the end zone. As a lineman, when we're in that tight shoe to shoe, you can never tell if you scored and Bernie had kept the ball. And there's a cannon in the orange bowl that they fire when we score. And so as I sat there, I heard the cannon go off and I knew the dream was still alive. The miracle finish left Miami fans breathless and convinced all of South Florida that their team was a team of destiny. The Hurricanes were only one game away from a bid to the Orange Bowl. But that one game was at Florida State in front of a frenzied record crowd. Emotions were at a fevered pitch on both sides as the Seminoles had bowl aspirations of their own. When Florida State held a 16 to seven lead late in the third quarter, they threatened to turn Miami's dream into a nightmare. But coach Nellenberger calmly reassured his team and readied them for the fourth quarter challenge that laid ahead. When the Hurricanes desperately needed a big play, Kosar and Ed Brown made it happen. A 37-yard touchdown pass. Just a field goal away from victory, the defense, which had allowed just 10 points in the fourth quarter all season, tightened its grip. Pride was at stake for seniors Jay Brophy, Ken Sisk, Fred Robinson, Jacinto Fernandez, Danny Brown, Eddie Williams, and Rodney Bellinger. They shut the Seminoles down cold giving the ball back to the offense with good field position. The Seminoles expected a pass, but Keith Griffin caught them flat-footed, bounced outside, and gained the biggest 20 yards of his career. The Canes bled the clock down to three seconds, then put their destiny in the hands of place kicker Jeff Davis. 
coach called a timeout, and then Florida State called another timeout, where I proceeded to go back to the sideline and converse with Coach Schnellenberger. And then when the time was ready, I went out and, and I told Coach, this one's for you, Coach. As time ran out, the foot of tiny Jeff Davis propelled the Hurricanes to a 17-16 victory and a trip to the 1984 Orange Bowl. The morning of the Orange Bowl dawned bright and clear. This was the 50th anniversary game, matching Miami's own Hurricanes against the Big 8 champion Nebraska Cornhuskers. With a number one ranking, the Heisman and Outland Trophy winners, and a devastating triple threat offense, the Cornhuskers were already being called the greatest team of all time. The Hurricanes came into the game as 15-point underdogs, but a flame of optimism burned confidently in the hearts of Miami players. With the Canes playing at home, equipped with their sophisticated passing offense, the Miami coaches were also quietly confident. I felt our defense could uh, match up with them, and I didn't think that they had the potential to uh, rush our passer and to cover our receiver. So yes, I, had, I felt very confident about it. The thing that I had to be concerned about going into that game was that our football team didn't peak and didn't get too high too early, and to try to hold everything in balance as, uh, as the game came up. At the Cotton Bowl, Georgia upset number two ranked Texas. So just four hours before kickoff, the Orange Bowl suddenly became the game for the national championship. To win, Miami would have to stop Heisman Trophy winner Mike Rogier. Our defense had played so many different types of offenses that we were accustomed to their offense. We knew what they were practically going to run. We just had to get down and dirty, beat the physical uh, offensive line that they had, and uh, just play aggressive football, which we did. The symbol of Miami's defensive intensity was backup linebacker Jacinto Fernandez, who came off the bench to eventually win the Most Valuable Defensive Player Award. When Miami's offense got its hands on the ball, it literally exploded. The pinpoint precision passing of Kosar established a new Orange Bowl passing yardage record while striking for one touchdown and then another. Shakespeare is split wide to the right. The backs are split behind Kosar. Second and short, like a free play down the middle. Dennison, he scores! Touchdown pass, Glenn Dennison! With a minute and eight left to play in the first quarter. Would you believe it? It is 16 to nothing, Miami. The nation wondered how Tom Osborne in Nebraska would respond. The answer was the devious Fumble Ruski. Guard Dean Stein Cooler's surprise touchdown aggravated Coach Nellenberger and stole momentum away from the Canes. But early in the third quarter, when a turnover gave Nebraska a chance to take the lead, the Hurricanes changed the course of the game by turning them away without a touchdown. Having withstood Nebraska's knockout attempt, Miami counterattacked with renewed strength. Kozar, high speed dive, touchdown Miami. Bernie takes, gives Bentley five, three, two, touchdown Miami. Albert Bentley could build his way through. Miami leads it 30 to 17. Just 15 minutes away from the ultimate goal, fighting superior size and depth, the Hurricanes found courage in the lessons learned at East Carolina and Florida State. They braced themselves as Nebraska made one last classic attempt to come back. Finally, on fourth down, with 48 seconds showing on the clock, Reserve tailback Jeff Smith brought the Huskers to within a point of Miami. When Nebraska went for two, 
the outcome of a national championship hung in the balance. You're right down to the guts of it right here, friends. 31 to 30, going for two. Gill takes, looks, rolls, throws. Deflected away! Deflected away! Miami leads 31-30. They tried for two and didn't make it. Well, we felt certain that they were going to go for the two, and in that situation, they like to flood the wide side of the field with three receivers and a sprint out pass or an option play to that side, so we wanted to kill containment. So we were in a man defense, and uh, <clears throat> I was on Aaron Fryer. He released inside to pick off the free safety, and his man, I back, released into the flats, and we just comboed that coverage, and I picked him up and took the ball away. With a flick of Ken Calhoun's wrist, Miami's impossible, incredible, unbelievable dream came true. The Miami Hurricanes had defeated number one ranked, unbeaten Nebraska to become the national champions of collegiate football. It had been one of the greatest college football games ever played, and one this team and this community will never forget.